My goodness, what a joy. Good morning, everyone. Good afternoon. Good evening. Wherever you are in the world, I'm so glad that you're here right now. We get to do what we do best, that is put in the work. I think we might be a little light today on participants. A lot of people got a lot of things going on, and the market might have a lot of people down. That's just the way it is right now. We are looking at a lot of fear out there. How do you feel? How did you feel over in the summer when Bitcoin was trading around $30,000? And how do you feel now when it's trading around 40,000? I think that's important to like know thyself. How do you feel internally? I hope that you are a lot more detached than even you are at 30,000. I remember what happened at 30,000. I remember a lot of people, right? I remember a couple of things. I do remember very clearly that before the danger, I was like, I don't know what's going on. Get neutral, right? And then I remember the market dumped big time. I didn't, did not expect that, by the way, or anything close to it. I just didn't know what was going on. Market dumps big time. And then a lot of people down here start being like, oh, the charts are bearish. I'm selling Bitcoin. I remember that very clearly. And I tried my hardest just to say, hey, listen, I'm not, be very careful out there. Like, be very careful about selling. Well, I'm doing it to accumulate more Bitcoin. Okay, but then wh why are you selling down after the dump? Um, you know, and then we, you know, over here was similar, right? In the fact that, well, before the dump, we did get neutral again. It, that did happen. We took profits, remember? We said if we take out the peak of wave one, that's never happened before. Something's not right. And then we saw also the trend line linear and log. And all we did was say, hey, you know, if you took profits off of, you know, into wave one and the correction of wave one, even though we want to push those trades, we don't have the opportunity. You got to take those profits. And then after that, I myself, I took another trade. I didn't, I didn't take that first black diamond that we looked at that Saturday morning together, but I waited, I waited over here. And then I took an entry. It was like around, I don't, I don't know. I, it was around $47,000. I don't know the exact entry. And my stop loss was at 44,000, I think a hundred and something, right? Which was just tagged out yesterday, right? Now we still haven't taken out the low of the wick over here. Uh, and we still, if anyone took the conservative entry over here and they chose to put the stop loss, not over underneath the wicks over here, but underneath the wick down over here, that, that trade would still, uh, tech, well, that trade would still be open. I didn't do that. I don't know if anyone did, but I said that, we would talk about it, even if that trade didn't get stopped out, and these trades did, of what the next potential entry will look like. So that's something that that we're going to do today, right? Uh, and then we're going to also do a little bit of, of housekeeping. And then I think we're going to do, I think there's a lot of questions out there in the Discord this morning. I didn't even get a chance to open my eyes. And then we're having some pretty intense, intensely good conversations inside uh the discord channel this morning and because of what just happened oh by the way i was completely wrong right the because powell was hawkish yesterday or the meet the meeting minutes yesterday were quite hawkish i meant to actually pull up something to discuss that with you which i don't have but i thought that if anything that maybe the meeting minutes will come out dovish because powell was so hawkish at the last uh, at the last Fed meeting and press conference, so I was I was dead wrong about that. And when I say that he came out, the meeting minutes were hawkish yesterday. That it seemed to be implying a couple of different things. It seemed to be implying that as the balance sheet, uh, the tapering wind off comes to uh, completion sometime around March, 
that might actually be when the Fed looks to raise rates. But I just want to be very clear. I don't know what happens next. When I say that, I mean, assuming that the Fed is able to complete their taper, I do not know whether they go right to raising rates. I don't know whether or not they just hold off. And I do not know whether or not they come in with another injection of QE purchases. I want to be very clear, and I, and I have been clear about that. For the, for, you know, the last thing that I said was, and it was, it was in October after the meeting minutes, and I remember everyone kept looking for them to taper. And, and going before that, I was like, no, nope, they're not going to taper. They're not going to taper. They're not going to taper. Jackson Hole, I'm like, they're not going to. They're not. And then after the October meeting minutes, I'm like, guess what? They just told us clear as day they're going to taper. And, you know, we set up and we looked at what that would mean for the markets. I don't know what happens, whether or not they actually go into moving rates. I know that if they go into moving rates, I know that there could be some near-term volatility in the equity markets. I'm not worried about it. There's ample liquidity out there. Uh, and we looked at the past at what happens as a rate hiking cycle begins. And we see that the markets, it's very bullish. It's very bullish. I know right now in the markets, there's a lot of uncertainty out there. But there's also a lot of participants, whether they are retail and or professional, who do not put to put in the work and the research. They don't know what they don't know what's going on. Right. So um, back to what I was. Oh, I don't know what happens next. I wanted to be very clear about that. And then I had something I was lining up. Oh, what was the most hawkish was what was the most hawkish is something that I have been talking about very recently to you. Uh, and that is that I think that they t started talking about then uh, announcing or communicating perhaps in the first quarter of when they would actually plan to run off the balance sheet, quantitative tightening. Now, I know that you heard from a lot of people, right? Yeah, you, you can't taper a Ponzi, right? I was like, well, no, they, they could taper it because it might cause them to actually have to inject more QE. We talked about that a lot here. And then we had, and then, you know, they, they can't raise rates because of the debt. They just can't do it. No, they could raise rates. And then we saw Lynn Alden and Luke Roman come in the week after and say, no, no, they could do that as well, right? It might mean sometime after that, that they have to come in and clean up the mess, right? With a further injection of, of QE. But, um, you know, and then you all, the, the tapers of vapor. Well, I don't know. It seems to be disappearing. It seems to be vaporizing, right? It's going to be, they're going to be unwinding by the end of March. Seems real to me. Um, so, but anyway, I don't know where we're going with that little tangent this morning, but it's, it's, it's all important. Tom's not feeling well. Oh, I'll come back to the, here we go. Feel, ah, uh, I'm sorry, brother. I, I'm so sorry. I know what that's like. Uh, hopefully and, and prayers and, and good thoughts that you recover quickly because, uh, most people have been recovering very quickly, but you know, there's always the outlier. So we have to take every, every it, we always have to take it seriously. That's for sure. Uh, so lots of good thoughts, lots of prayers coming your way on this particular view over here. This is Bitstamp. We're looking at, uh, the, the April high, and then we're looking at the peak of wave one. And why we were holding that trend line, we're trading under that trend line right now, right? I'm making an observation because uh, it's different elsewhere. This is what I really want to do. Um, so yes, is it, well, hold, I want to add to this this really good comment, right? So the way that I look at the fear uh, index is it's like an oscillator, and most of the time, if you buy if you buy an oscillator when it's oversold and sell when it's overbought, you know, especially in a ranging market, it's going to work out well for you. The thing is, is that whether it's 15 or 20% of the time, when oversold or overbought could remain so for a long time, you just get absolutely crushed, right? So right now we are, and I, I mean, I see the, the fear. You, that's what Twitter is the best for. You could really see people's uh, sentiment and emotions really well. Um, but there's, there, there, the fear is high right now and we're going to look at it. I mean, we're coming into support on multiple, from multiple angles and levels, 
So interesting. Now, the, the thing is, is that every once in a while, and it could be to the upside, you remember over here, and, and, and everyone knows that I have a, a, a great deal of respect for uh, Benjamin and Cohen and all of his analysis and all that he brings to the space and have enjoyed working uh, more closely together with him in 2021. But as Bitcoin came above $20,000, right, uh, you know, a, a lot of people started selling and, and, and unloading way, way early. And it was the opposite of fear, right? What's the opposite of the fear index when it's euphoric, right? We, we stayed euphoric for a long time. And that doesn't have to happen only on the upside. That could happen also on the downside. If you go back, I guess, suppose to like over here at the top of 2017, right? The fear index must have been pretty high, right around $10,000. And you came all the way down, you know, it's called 6,000. So overbought, oversold could uh, at points remain that way for an extended period of time. And it was a great comment. It's true, but that's an important distinction to make at the same time. Uh, later. <laughs> did I say, did I say later or oscillator or, or, or how do you pronounce it? Oscillator? <laughs> I have no idea. Yeah. So true story. I can't sound out words. I had to learn English by memorization. Could you imagine how long it took me to learn Spanish? Ah, um, Jamie, I'm going to try my best to, to do a lot to clarify that. And Jamie, um, what would be really helpful is if you are able, as I'm going over the presentation here, um, to, to really articulate what you're most confused about. It's good to know that you're confused, right? But it's another thing if we could figure out what you're most confused about so we can take a deeper look at it, all right? So I wanna fix this up and clean this up for you. This is, the, I said it yesterday in the live stream. I said, if we take out the lows over here, we're going to go from yellow to red, right? Now, I wanted to do it live with you. I didn't want to, you know, I, I want you all to know in real time what's happening and how we're doing it. So I'm going to that right after that big down bar. The big down bar is what caused us to move to red. And it didn't happen before. It happens afterwards. So right there is what I wanted to move from, uh, from, from blah, blah, blah to blah, 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 from yellow to red. So let's see if we could do that one second together. All right. That just make orange. <laughs> oh, okay. So here we are. We're back in red. All right. So that's that's number one important. I want you all to see it happening as it happens in real time to understand why. Why we're doing that? I, I you know, I, I look. This was this was really what happened in real time. I think if I were better, right? I think at this point over here, 58,500, right? If, you're, if that was our first exit, our first exit on any trades from the bull market, and the, the exact verbiage you used was, if you're not out, you're dead wrong, right? A lot of people still missed it, and a lot of people still were confused, and no one talks about it, but at any which way. Uh, I think, should that have been when we moved to yellow? Because I was, I, I didn't, I'm keeping this green, because I was very bullish over here coming out of this correction. I took positions out of this correction, Right now, those positions were closed when I when I closed them over here, right around fifty thousand, right around entry. But I took positions out of over here. I was extraordinary bullish. This was green because I I mean green because I was bullish. But I wonder if on that break this should have gone to yellow, and with that with that insight in mind, I wonder what happens over here. We called the correction of wave two. I didn't I did not go yellow at all, and I'm not changing this to yellow because. I was very bullish, right? It wasn't until over here where we, we did go red when we called the exit at 53,140. But I wonder, and I'm not, this one I'm sure of, I feel like this one should have gone to yellow. Should this one have gone to yellow also? I mean, I, I don't know. It's just questions I'm, I'm asking myself just because going forward, I'm always looking to improve, right? I'm always looking to improve. Now, the other thing that I want to talk about is what happens next on here. We've moved into red. Red is what? Like, no, this is not a good time to be looking for positions. Wait for clarity. Things are uncertain. Now, generally speaking, these are also good times too. And all of you, many of you have that mindset. There's no, it's very clear to me that, you know, hey, this, this appears to be a really good time 
for the long term to be accum accumulating any spot Bitcoin, Ethereum, crypto, yada, 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 right? So this, this metric over here we use for, for trading. When we have the green light to really be looking to go into trades and push trades. And it does not mean, right, during yellow, right, this was the trade lined up of the most important trend line in crypto. I know a lot of you, I didn't go in hard with leverage over here. I know a lot of you did. I was buying spot over here myself. I bought spot at $39,000. I then bought spot at $32,500. And then I bought spot at $47,000. I recently bought spot at $50,000, right? And this past week, I, I've been taking out a loan. I'm looking to buy spot. And to guess what? I would have bought spot, you know, had we had we continued rising up out of over here, you know, and we're moving towards fifty thousand dollars. I am happy to be buying spot lower, and I hope that uh, I, ho I hope that I have the opportunity that price stays suppressed uh, one more day, and I have that opportunity. And I, I don't know how I'll line it up. I'll let you know. But generally speaking, when I'm dollar cost averaging in spot. I'm, it's just dollar cost averaging for me. It's not really overthinking it. I, I get very accurate and and uh, and with precision when I'm looking to place trades on any type of leverage. So uh, what happens next, right? So is it is it possible that you that that I might personally take any type of trade in the red zone, right? Uh, well, if I do, it's going to be definitely le le like I'll let you know I'm doing it. I'll let you know why, and I'll also let you know, hey, listen, unless you deem yourself to be, you know, an expert, you probably don't want to, right? It's during the green the green phase, really, that we want to be more aggressive, all right? Um, so with that being said, right, I told you yesterday that I would do this, and, and I have to, I'm doing it for myself as well, right? This trade is still open for anyone who used the low of the wick. I mean, it's hanging in by a thread. Uh, you know, is it going to halt? Who knows? But at the same time, it's time to go ahead and just line up when the next potential entry could be. And for me, that's looking like this over here. All right. So this is what I'm watching now. I want you all to know. And then, uh, you know, we'll go forward from there. What? No. Matt, I, I'm, I'm not uncertain. So, by the way, this... Yesterday, when I was talking about that, a gold analysis. Um, so d hold on one second. There's a lot to talk about over here. Alan, good morning. Uh, okay, Dean, did you see the presentation that Big Cheese did on the Biffinex whale? Like the channel that we have on Discord. Uh, I think that for sure that whoever the Biffinex whale is, whoever is behind that algorithm, which I, I mean, AIs are not AIs. They are really just advanced algorithms. You might want to call that an AI and it is uh, an extraordinarily and exceptional trader. It is able to not only manipulate and react to the market. It's not always right, but if when it's wrong, it gets out of its trades instantly. It is something to watch. You could watch that on Bitfinex taking place in real time. Big Cheesy shared the chart with us and you could watch what it does and how it does it, right? It is an absolute master. There's no quite You can't front run the algorithm, whatever algorithm that is. It's too good, all right? So that's one thing. And that so whether or not that's, uh, you know, whether that whale is an algorithm and or who is behind it, I mean, those things are debatable, right? But, but for sure, that that whale is a master. Uh, now, I'm not uncertain at all, Matt. When I talk about uncertainty, like, and, and yellow is uncertainty, right? Red is, is, is like, I, I don't know how to term it. Like green is green light go, you know, yellow is, is caution and, and red is like stop, right? So, uh, at, Matt, but that's, that's, again, I was buying spot during the red area, right? And if you go ahead and you pull up the true trend and like anytime it's red is generally a good time to being to be uh, looking to buy. I, I don't want to say spot like I don't think this was a good area to buy spot so much as a good area to trade out of. 
But uh, what I'm getting at is this is j and by the way, just so you can see what this looks like in in a, a bear market, because the, the, you know some people might rightfully say, well, <laughs> you know now's not a good time to buy spot if we're in a bear market, right? So that's something that we should talk about. I don't think we're in a bear market. Right now, if we are experiencing and we've talked a lot about this in recent weeks, mini bears and mini bulls. Well, there's no question that we're in a mini bear right now. Right. When I say I, I, when I say I don't think we're in a bear market, meaning I don't think that this is going to last a total of of approximately 12 months. Right. The, the 2013 uh lasted 12 months and, and two weeks. And then the 2018 did I say that right? 2014 and the 2018 bull market lasted 12 weeks. There was a difference of two weeks. They both had a parabolic blow off top and that parabolic blow off top, it caused structural, structural damage. That structural damage took an 85% drawdown in both cases and one year to repair. Uh, we, we haven't had any type of euphoric blow off top. If this was the top of the market at $69,000, then what we're looking at was not diminishing returns by anyone's projections, right? We, we just saw like significantly reduced returns. So um, I, I don't think that we're in a bear market. If you were in a bear market and you accumulated every time you went into a red zone over here, right? Now, this is, this is very vague. This is just red true trend. We're not talking about like when we enter a red zone as, as far as the way that we are doing it, because you can see there are periods when we, you know, true trend is red and we're in a green zone, right? So, you know, just be, be a little bit loose with me. I'm just trying to make a point to you to help you understand. I don't think that we're in uh, a traditional type of bear market. And if we were, and you did every time accumulate the true trend went red, in during a, um, a, a bear market, then at that point, you would be looking at still, you know, some pretty decent uh, uh, purchases. I'm in the wrong year. Sorry about that. I'm in the wrong year. So you'd be starting at your highest purchase would be 12,000, right? Then you're purchasing somewhere around 10,000. Then you're purchasing somewhere around 70, 75,000. And then again, somewhere around 7,000, right? 6,000, you know, all of those purchases throughout the bear market, you you would have done really well. By the way, if you wanted to do something like that, right, it's when the true trend BTC turns red and you can see the difference really quick right over here. And then why do I feel I have oh, on the three day? Sorry, on the three, like this is the strategy right here on the three day. Bear with me, right? Look at this. This is the pocket when you want to start accumulating if you were looking for that long term. Uh, what about over here right now? Well, we're not we're not there. We're not there. What about the March 2020 crisis? Right. So true trend three day BTC. If you're playing the long game on this, this is the sweet spot to go ahead and look to look over here again. And this is in the in the previous uh, in the previous bull mar bear market. Sorry about that. Well, I don't know what's off with that. And look what that looked like. You don't want to start accumulating to the end. Look at that. Into the end of the of the bear market. So again, that alone for anyone playing the long game might be the best way to go about it. But uh so that again each day we cover we do cover a lot. It's good. So I, all that was because Matt I'm just trying to give you the difference of what we're looking at between me being uncertain, talking about trading on leverage, because for me, the name of the game is is holding that spot, accumulating that spot. It's transformed where I had every uh, indication and intention of looking for Bitcoin to become very overvalued and then looking to exit a majority of that spot to now at this point in time, because of the changing nature of, of the market, that I would be much less at, at uh, whatever to, to sell any type of spot Bitcoin, uh, would look to access liquidity in other ways. And uh, it's, it's my leverage Bitcoin trades during the green zones 
that I look to further accumulate uh, Bitcoin with and and or take profits of, right? So if you see that Bitcoin went, for example, from where we are today and wound up, you know, moving into some type of, of massive move towards overvalued, at that point, I would be exiting, pushing these trades as long as possible and looking to exit and take profits on those coins rather than the spot. Big cheesies, yes, amazing. Long-term thinking. So, uh, listen. So let's let, let's. This is a great question. Uh, so let me move over to talk about it really quick, right? So, question is about like, is it dangerous selling over here, right? So I wanted to look at this with you. You all know that this is our um, our danger zone. And by the way, if we come in and take out that wick low, right, this needs to be readjusted and this will be readjusted. I'll explain it to you if it is readjusted, why we're doing it, excuse me, in real time. Uh, but right now, it's this still stands as, as, the, as the box between 6,000 and 58,500. We have a lower close. So actually, right now, it, sh it should both be like in this area right here around 58,500. But I'm not going to do that today. Let's see where, whether or not price bottoms out over here or not. Uh, I wanted to just look at this, this, this trend line that I have over here with you, right? So in two different ways, I lined up if we were going to see a head and shoulders, that this would be the left shoulder, this would be the head. And then because of the structure of a, a past bear market, you see the, the initial move down. It's generally or close to 40%. Hey, that's right where we are. We're, we're right near there right now, right? And then you see the bounce up to the 0.38 fib. So let's just go ahead and just say like, hey, wait, into the trend line over here, that would actually be the normal structure of a bear market. That's why it's called the danger zone over here, because then you have the bounce up, right? That's the willy woo bounce. This is, you know, the bounce up to the, the 0.382 fib, right? And that's why it's a danger zone because we have to watch what happens coming out of that. So, I, I mean, it's still on the table, so we're watching it, but most importantly, right? Uh, and that's, that's what I was looking for as far as a head and shoulders potentially developing. Now, there are other people who see this and, and I think they're right, right? You could see a left shoulder, a head, and a right shoulder, right? So the neckline was kind of like right there and we, and we broke down. I can't argue with that. Hey, that's solid to me. Right, right. This is how, like you could all see that. I see it. I'm not arguing with that whatsoever. I do remember the same time the the same people calling this Peter Brandt. You know, I remember the last time he called a head and shoulders on Bitcoin and told us that we were going to 20k. That uh, he was dead wrong, right? And then there was that Dr. Berry guy. You're only as good as your last trade. Who will forever be remembered as the one who you know really got it wrong. Um, so this trend line over here, though, this is, this is, I think, important. I think it could be lined up two different ways. So it could be lined up like, let me try to find it. All right, so I have to do it manually. I think that this trend line over here and the way that I li lined it up was like this off of these touches. This is for my head and shoulder. Like the, the, if, this is a, uh, if this is the left shoulder, the head and the right shoulder comes up afterwards. And this is the neckline if that's happening. The neckline, that trend line is coming in somewhere around $40,000, right? Somewhere around 40, right horizontally where you're looking at. And you can see that's also an area of, of horizontal support as well. Now, if you line it up also like this, because I don't know which one is right. They both they both could be kind of right. And that's the bottom and then touch off of up, up over here, right? That, I mean, that also makes just as much sense to me as having that trend line over there. So it's a little bit different, but not much. And that brings it a little bit higher from like 38,000, 30, 39,000 to 40,000. And you can see again, also that horizontal resistance in that area. So I wouldn't sell 42,000 because in my opinion, you'd be selling into, into support and not only selling into support, but you could be selling into support at, at high fear. Okay, now, uh, and this is and this is my opinion. And guess what? I, I'm still bullish on Bitcoin, 
right? Jordan, you're you're in the red. What are you talking about? You're bullish on Bitcoin. Yeah, d- don't get confused with like uh, Bitcoin spot and Bitcoin momentum. There's, right now, there's no, there's, we're not, we don't have any momentum whatsoever. The momentum's the other way, right? We we look for leverage trades when there's momentum, and we look for those trends to continue as long as they do, right? We've left yellow cautious, like yeah, we broke that trend line over here. But hey, you know, we're not out of the woods. And then we went back to, to red, as we said we could yesterday. We said all that before it happened. So right now, I would be very cautious about selling down here. Now, it's, it is true that the elevator down happens. And if you break an important area, like that we just talked about from two different angles, that price could dump down. That Listen, hey, that could happen. But it seems like a low probability trade to me. What happens if we broke down from here? And then it's not guaranteed, but if you got that retest and then a resumption off, that might be a better trade if you're looking on the short side. I don't, you know, if you were looking on the short side, right, don't you think that up here when we talked about the technical break was a better one? Because I hear a lot of chatter now, right, about, about, I hear a lot of chatter now about people who like, ah, Bitcoin's bearish and I'm selling the same chatter that happened down over here, right? But I don't, I don't look to sell Bitcoin. But this is when I, this is when I exit it. This is when I exit it, right? So if you were looking to, to be the like the guy who looks to sell Bitcoin to accumulate more Bitcoin, why didn't you do it up here? That I mean, but, but really, why didn't you do it like when when CTM is exiting? Then if you if you know because things are getting sketchy then if you're really a, you know, a hero, then this is where you should be selling. Or even up here when we called, we called this ahead of it happening where the correction of wave two would occur. That's also another point if you were like bearish on Bitcoin that you would look to sell, right? I, I would if I, if I wanted to sell Bitcoin. That's a place I would look to sell. That's a place I would look to sell. But as it is, people are looking to start selling down here. They didn't call it down over here, right? So that that's it's worthy of pointing out because it's just the truth. So, all right. Uncertain in leverage trading, one hundred percent. The only time that there that we're green lighted, in my opinion, to be trading on leverage is when, um, well, that's that's debatable. But you know, when we have a green light, we're in the green, right? Those that took this trade over here out of the descending wedge. And if you remember, because I remember, and there's a tweet of it, I talked about in great detail, right? Because we had a perfect breakout, retest, and the resumption off, I called out for everyone. Like, if you got the skills, you're in a red zone, right? So maybe, so may, and I'm not, I mean, I'm not changing it now, but, but that's debatable. Maybe that should have been where we went to yellow on the resumption. I feel like that's a little off, That that's fair, right? But I didn't take that trade. I was only buying spot. I didn't go into leverage over here. I didn't take my leverage trade to off of here. That's why I went from the green. Um, so, you know, could you take a leverage trade in red and or the yellow area? Yes. But hey, experts only, right? And you have to know whether or not it's time for you to be taken on risk. It's a lot more, you know, safe in the green area to be looking to go ahead and and trade with momentum. Um, right back at you, my brother. Right back, right back at you. Jordan spot on regarding missing the blow off top and damaging structure. The inflation is real, right? Mike, the, the, this is a great segue into the next part of the conversation. The inflation is real. Might continued is six to 12 months in a serious fiscal deflationary policy not have the same effect. All right. So, by the way, when we resume out or if we go lower, obviously I have no idea. We're, We're in a red area. We just entered into a red area, right? Now, is it possible we could flip back out into, into yellow and, and then green? Right. So I talked about we could have small areas of boxes where this could be a long lasting red area and we could be trading down for a while. There's nothing bullish about Bitcoin right now. Now that that next that next changes, the first indication of any repair is set up today. 
and the line right over there. That would be the first indication, right? Is this a safer line? Thinking out loud with you all right now, right? Is that the conservative line right now? Sure, I'm gonna put this one for, for, to make this clear for everyone right now like this. All right. So, and, and this one, so this is confusing. I don't want to be confusing. Th this one is still open because of the, the wick has not been taken out, right? So I, I'm going to just leave it up there, but let me go ahead and dim it. And then you all know what I'm talking about and why, right? So the only reason I haven't deleted that in adding the next line is because anyone who took this trade, that's still a valid and open entry. I don't want to be confusing. I'm sorry, but th th that's where we are. Um, so I don't know what happens next, right? And until we get some type of breakout to the upside and momentum building to the upside, we are right now like bearish on Bitcoin. Now I'm not selling Bitcoin, right? And um, I'm actually looking to buy Bitcoin. Again, different different strategies while I'm putting them all together and make it very clear. But is it possible that Bitcoin goes sideways for an extended period of time. Now, is it, is it possible to go sideways? Let's call it three to six months. Julian is using the example of six to 12 right over here, right? But let's, is it possible Bitcoin goes sideways for the next three, you know, three to, uh, three to six months? It's quite possible, right? Um, we have to be prepared for that. And, uh, you know, we're, we're just kind of, and, and I told you this was gonna happen. I said if we didn't peak out towards the end of the year, like at that point, there's no model. It's following price. And that's what we're doing right now. So we can't predict like what happens next. Now we looked at what happens as far as, you know, uh, we're in an inflationary type environment. I don't know. I mean, I, I personally raising my hand called the inflationary environment, you know, back in March, April of 2020. And there were a lot of people, these deflationists, these, these, these analysts who gave every single reason because of the money supply and the bank's lending and da, 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 why it was all deflationary and why it was not inflationary. And I was like, whatever, right? And uh, well, history has proven who was right and who was wrong, right? And now at like peak inflation, I don't know, you know, I feel like it's coming to kind of like a peak. And um now we're seeing everyone talk about it. Like the guy who told you that it was going to be transitory very recently said, oh, I was wrong about that. It's not transitory. Well, he doesn't have a history of getting it right or at least publicly getting it right, right? So are you going to listen to him when he tells you now that like we're entering an inflationary type environment? I don't, I'm not so sure about that. Now but we're watching what the central banks are doing worldwide and we saw that they were pivoting to tightening. And we started ahead of the rest of the market participants. We were among the first, again, to see what was happening, right? So I'm going to keep going with like what our view is. It seems to be, you know, right, like pulse on the market. So that's why I say I don't know what happens next. Right now, the Fed is doing a good job at talking market participants to believe that they're going into a tightening mode. Right. And taper is tightening as far as the markets are concerned. When you, when the Fed tapers their purchases, that's tightening. It's not quantitative tightening where they're taking away actual liquidity, but they're 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 taking the foot off the gas of how much they're adding. Right. So in one sense, th they are tightening whether or not they need to move forward to actually raise rates or not. I don't know. That's what I said at the beginning of this conversation. We have to wait and see if they finish the taper, what they do. I'm, I'm open to, to all possibilities at this point. It's too far in advance, but I think right now what you're seeing, and you're seeing a really good job of being done, is the Fed talking down the market without having to intervene, and they're doing a very good job at it. Uh, you know, that with all that being said, I want to be very clear about this. I think everyone right now who's freaking out is making a big mistake about what happens to the markets as the Fed begins a rate hiking cycle. Because as the Fed begins a rate hiking cycle, it's bullish and numbers go up for quite a while. 
right? It's not until quantitative tightening begins that for some time afterwards, you then see a breakage in the system. And why we might soon be having the conversation about when quantitative tightening will begin. And if that happens, there might be further, let's say, uh, defensiveness out there in the markets because people are shook. Uh, you know, the markets are going to resume upwards and for quite some time, in my opinion. All right. And by the way, uh, great game of trades this morning, talking about it well over here. You've heard all these things from myself. Liquidity will eventually dry up and risk at risk on assets nuke as the Fed starts quantitative tightening. But, and by the way, from the last time they, they started quantitative tightening, it took two years for the markets to break. Two years. Uh, equity markets, all-time highs, Bitcoin doing Bitcoin things. But today, we are still at record levels of liquidity in the system. Remember, I keep saying there's ample liquidity out there. ECB still printing. China looking to ease up. And the Fed is still, even though they're tapering, adding massive amount of liquidity. And I've gone on to say, even when they finish their taper, there's still massive liquidity out there. Among other indicators, bank reserves exceed $4 trillion. Long on history's largest liquidity trade, Bitcoin, right? And then you had this person the reason I'm not more bullish is I agree with Sven. Sven, I'm assuming this is Sven from North Grup Trading. The, the guy is never, there's never been anyone who's gotten him more wrong. The, that's the truth. The guy is, is bearish. The markets are not crashing. The markets, it's the meme of CTM. And this guy is always looking for the markets to crash. And he's on the wrong side of the trade. And I've always said, if he would stop looking for the markets not to crash, and use his talent, which are many, he would be a phenomenal asset to everyone. The only time that he got it right, and by the way, we did too, We it's on the video, it was exceptional work. Here in CTM, late January and into February, we were selling the equity markets and full tilt into risk on, because we saw the crash before anyone else saw the crash. Now, when I say anyone else, I use that lightly. There were other people like the guy from Macro Voices who also got it right, right there with us. I can't think of anyone else. Now, Sven was among the one, you know, of course, he's always bearish. So when the market started crashing, he was on the right side, except that he sold out way too early. He didn't push the trade as it fell. You know, he as soon as the markets went the way he thought they were going to weigh, he then flipped bullish. So, you know... Anyway, I'm, that's just the truth. That's what. That's everything that happened. So, um, Julian, how did we take us there? Did, did I? Did I? I mean, I wanted to talk about all the things that we just started talking about. So I hope that we did it right yesterday when when I were, when I was talking about gold and trying to like do a deep dive into gold. And by the way, before we go there, uh. I, I can't remember, uh, JW, right, was talking about the cup and handle forming on, on gold. And this is what I pointed out. I don't know if that, this is, this is what you want to see, right? Uh, look at this. Yeah, that's the same one. This is starting in, in 2011, right? To the, here you can see a really beautiful, beautifully, uh, Done TA showing that cup and handle. Let me get this tweet out to anyone here in the chat who wants to take a look at that. That's done really well. And that's what JW uh, C was pointing out to us yesterday. Yeah. So, yeah. D d hold on, Johnny. Props where props is due. Sven is absolutely. So, two things. First of all, it's true. He does absolutely fantastic job at pointing out the foolishness of the Fed policy. Right. Uh, he is a perma bear. And again, when the market's actually broken, it was time to go bearish. He did flip bullish, but at the same time, he is very talented. And I, I wish that he would be using that, that skill that he has, which is, which is way up there, uh, on, towards the right side of, of what is happening, right? It's, all, it's like all the guys after the Fed came in 
with that $4 trillion expansion of their balance sheet. And I was like, yep, well, that was the crisis. And that was a more than ample response. And we're not going to have another crisis for a while. And if we have another crisis, the earliest it'll probably be is when they're ready to introduce the digital dollar. And they will create that crisis in order to introduce the digital dollar. But you had a lot of a lot of people out there talking about insolvency events and that the markets were going to crash again and go lower and this and that. So anyway, I try. I, I mean, I was trying my hardest, Julian, to get it right in answering that question. Um, there we go. Nothing easy about it. Zach, boom. The, first of all, there is nothing easy about any of this, right? And when I'm talking about, you know, showing you like where I, we could, where I, where we could have done better, right? Should that have been yellow on the break of this trend line? 58,500, you're not out, right? Should that have, you know, over here, I don't, I'm not as so sure, right? And it's, it's doing all that work in order to, to continue doing it right. I think that most market participants right now are very wrong when they're looking at what the Fed is telegraphing and what happens next about them thinking that we're moving into a therefore deflationary type environment. If we look at whether, whether we look at gold here or if we look at the equity markets, allow me one second to pull up the NASDAQ as well, All right? From when the Fed begins hiking. Now, this one was different. Right? Here's the Fed beginning their rate hiking cycle. I'm looking at the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ, I mean, it's up by a lot. Well, that's up by 100%. So I digress. But, you know, it wasn't teeing off, so to speak. Right? Uh, during, But we could never really get going. And that caused the next crisis. And the, from this rate hike cycle beginning over here in, in December 2015, right? The the equity markets, you know, began teeing off. There's a volatility at the time of the hike because you get just like right now at the time of the announcement, people don't really understand and they get really sh shooken out of their positions. That's exactly what they're trying to do anyway. Assets were getting way too overvalued. It was not a good look for the Fed. So w what are they doing? They're trying their best to like fix that and it's working, right? It's and and should that happen again if we get to the rake hike, whether it's March, April, May, or June, would we see some volatility near term? What I'm trying to look at is what happens afterwards, right? That's that's what I'm getting at. And uh, you know, so I hope that that does my best to answer that. Um so how would you play alts in this market, including Ethereum? Well, Blue Magic, that is the perfect discussion for tomorrow Friday session because I don't I, I need to to take a deep dive into just like I did here the night before last for, for gold. I could do that with alts and let you know. If I could pull it up, I would. Give me one second. Give me one second because I started doing this last night. They're not there though. I don't know. I don't have my, my laptop with me. Um, so give me to tomorrow, Blue Magic. We'll take that up again tomorrow. But I started doing it last night and uh, we'll take a, a, a deeper look at it right now. But right now, right, uh, Bitcoin dominance is picking up or falling off or is it just staying the same? Let's take a look at it. Mm. You know, uh, get let me let me do that. Let's make, let's make that the theme of tomorrow. All right, and I, and I'll do a a good job of preparing for it. Good question. Uh, we're still putting in a higher low on Bitcoin so far, right? And I want you to see it. All right here's that last low, All right? So we're still so far putting in a higher low. It looks like we closed. Uh, below this 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 trend line and there was one other way to look at it I want to find it really quick stay with me we still got some more to go right Nasdaq you know today it's it's 
so was, again, we had the like the market surprise by the Fed that they're going to be actually potentially looking at running off their balance sheet, right? And then how the market's doing the day after. Well, they're kind of stabilizing. It's not a big deal yet, right? The, the S&P 500, it really dropped all the way to that middle line. It, it dropped. Here's that touch of the middle line. Again, that touch of the middle line. Here it was resistance, right? And then we were up here yesterday. And then after the Fed meeting minutes, it dropped all the way. And it's finding support, right? We could go lower, right? But we're still technically well within this channel ever since the election. So there's no there's no yet cause for concern. We did talk about, though, a breakdown, a technical breakdown of the equity markets. That also would signal a good place to go long gold. The rate hike or the technical breakdown of the equity markets. Uh, dollar is not really doing anything. It's unchanged on the day. So yesterday so far was a lot of hoopla. That That's really what it was. Um, the 10 year, by the way, is getting towards the top of the range. Here's the top horizontal, right towards that top of that range of this, you know, uh, ascending triangle that we're looking at. Oh, what that was weird. Of that ascending triangle. Uh, so we're coming into resistance right now on the 10 year. We'll, we're following that closely. And then, uh, yeah, the, mar the markets don't look to be like holding too much fear here today, do they? Right? Everything's kind of like, P I, I see crypto Twitter freaking out. But I, I feel like since we saw what was coming, going this is going back to middle of October, we've done and continue to do all the work to keep level headed and calm about what happens next, including the the changing structure of the Bitcoin bull market. And by the way, all of this this noise still does not mean that potential four year cycle attributes are not in play. They absolutely are. There's no question about it. But at the same time, we've been moving and watching as the market is changing and trying to evolve with it as closely as possible. And that's why we started leaning in more to what is happening directly on the charts. And then we have also, just to let it be known, right? Like for me, you all know, below the green, right? And above the blue, that's accumulation area, long-term on Bitcoin. And you see, once again, here, here, and now here again, that's exactly what I'm doing. Every time I'm given that opportunity, I'm, I'm adapting to the market and I'm using it as a point to go ahead and make those long-term purchases, accumulation purchases of spot Bitcoin, right? Uh, and you can see like, just, I know this is just a random line I drew here. That was to show people that, you know, this is what's been happening. Our trend lines going back to all the way since we exited the hype phase is where Bitcoin has been trading through. And that's nothing new, right? We're back towards just this random trend line back towards what looks like historically a really good place to be buying Bitcoin. I've seen a, a lot of people turning bearish on Bitcoin. Um, I don't know. That's, I guess that's that. By the way, this last chart over here, this was showing the Bitcoin lows, right? And I looked at the one time, right? This is coming off that massive, massive, 13x parabolic move in 2000 end of 2013 right and then we put in that that down price bar right so it was like a 46 percent drawdown over the next year if that something like that were to occur now the difference is that was coming off a massive move up we did not see a massive move up at all in 2021 uh, or even close so if we if we take another measured move down there that's putting us down towards something like, you know, $15,000 Bitcoin. Or, you know, do you think that's going to happen? Or if this wasn't even, by the way, a massive move up and then Bitcoin stayed flat, flat to slightly up over the last two, you know, this move was less of an angle to the upside. I guess not off the yearly low, but let me show you what that looks like so you can see. So I'm looking at the angle of the yearly low. 
This one was actually higher. This last one was was higher. So maybe we come off a lift. This one went flat afterwards, right? This was massively up. It went down. Maybe this one goes a little like sli sideways to slightly down. You know, I think that would be the worst case that we could see. The worst case that we could see. And after that, it's going to be a massive move up. So do we expect more wicks to the downside? Um, I, I have no idea. Right? So you're talking about, we, we kept, remember we kept seeing these wicks, by the way? And I was pointing out that, that sellers are having trouble holding, right? Are we seeing that this time? I have to go back to this fractal only because, you know, again, this was way ahead of time. We talked about here way ahead of time that the hardest thing to trade was going to be a break of the correction of wave two and then coming back down and taking all those stops out. Well, that's exactly what has happened. That's, that's exactly what has happened. And I hope you were prepared. That's exactly what happened. The breakout and then taking out the stops. Um, you know, are we going to see something similar next with a move up? And Tanya, does that look like uh, a wick that we saw over here? You know, maybe not a wick in the sense that we didn't wick up yesterday. But if Bitcoin were to, you know, today, you know, trade back above $45,000, then the sellers couldn't hold down over there. I mean, maybe. I just don't think we're out of the woods yet. You could see even what happened last time. This is where we were last time right here today. We came back up and then slowly dripped down again. This killed people. This is when people were really, this is this killed, destroyed people. And, and you remember the work we did at this particular time. I said to all of us, it looks like by the end of October, we will make a new all-time high on Bitcoin. It happened, right? Um, so people again are similar situation. Uh, you know, six months later, Bitcoin's trading higher, you know? So who else? That, that, I mean, that's the, this is the, this is true. This is important to talk about because retail buys crypto, crypto Twitter is mostly retail. Crypto Twitter seems to time the market really bad. And crypto Twitter uh, is going to be like euphoric as Bitcoin breaks $69,000. And that's when you're going to see a ton of, of money coming into the markets. There's, there's no question about that, you know? We don't want we don't want to be chasing after price. We want to be pre preventive as try as fast as we can. Um, Jesse had been putting out a lot of great work on Twitter on the RSI per the RSI weekly. It seems like the four year cycle timing could play out, but obviously that means lower returns. Good stuff, Jesse. Uh, we are still within a single four hour candle range, 42 to 52. I think the worst is already over like in July. I mean, hope potentially and, 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 and maybe likely and, and hopefully, uh, I, I mean, I tend to agree, but I don't know where max pain is or max pain would be for, for a lot of people. So I just want to look at that really quick. We have this last swing low. We, we looked at in this episode here together how that is uh, support, whether it's horizontal or from two different angles, right? Trend lines in that thirty-eight to $40,000 area. So taking out that area, right? Even this, this swing low and this swing low, I think that would, would really clear out a lot of participants. So potentially that could happen. But my opinion, here's I guess this is my opinion right here. I don't think that whether it's let's call it thirty two thousand, right, and and thirty eight, like that that would be, in my opinion, would was most likely would be the max pain area, and why I'm with you, Andy, that this, you know, this likely potentially could be somewhere around the bottom that we're at right now, right? It it you know, we we could still go lower. I would be extraordinarily surprised and, I, and you'll hear me be the first one to say hey, I was very wrong 
if we were to go ahead and trade below that area. I'll keep it up there on the chart just as a reminder for us all. I don't know. I I haven't we got we got to go into the into the the channel and find out, right? Into the Bitfinex Well channel. Has it been active? Is B Big Cheesy is, is yesterday still talking? So Alan, please go ahead and uh you know ask a, a, ask Big Cheesy like a direct question. He's he's active in there you know almost daily, and then from there, you know if there's anything new. That we could we could get Big Cheesy back on to talk about hundred percent would love to would love to find it would be really actually interesting maybe I'll reach out to him it would be really interesting from the last time we recorded to what happens now how he's able to explain to us what was happening and the what he's learned in the process since and by the way you know he he was really uh, talking about why. He felt like we were going lower in that area. I think price was trading around fifty thousand dollars at the time, uh, right? Was it fifty four thousand? When was the? I, I'm sorry, I just want to know for myself. So the date of the recording, right? So the, the over here, fifty four thousand. No. It was it was fifty thousand. And he, he talked about why we were not getting ready to break out out of the correction of wave two yet and why. So it would be very interesting to see on this breakout over here what the Bifinex whale did, how he was positioned, and whether or not that gave us any indications. That's a good one. We need I need to catch up with Big Cheesy and all of us to go ahead and take a look at that. Makes sense to gold if Bitcoin blows up, but even if gold went to AK, would you diversify or stick with Bitcoin? I didn't mean to give anyone the impression yesterday that I was looking uh, to exit Bitcoin and move into gold. That is definitely not the case whatsoever. I am way more bullish on Bitcoin than gold over the next any amount of years. Um, right? The only time that would be different would be near term. If Bitcoin were to enter a blow off top, I would expect over the next 12 months, for gold to drastically outperform Bitcoin. And that's because I would be looking for Bitcoin to have a massive drawdown. Um, so the only thing that could offer any type of surprise as far as gold, and I've, and I've always been very consistent about that, about this, if there's any type of repricing of gold, if you see China and Russia have been for years stockpiling gold, diversifying out of the dollar, and if we were to see any type of new monetary system uh, put into place now, the powers that be, you know, whether, you know, the fourth turning, the, the great reset, the new world order, what they're trying to do is institute a new monetary system. And they might even try to put, you know, instead of Lehman Brothers, the Federal Reserve at the altar this time, they're trying, you know, back through the IMFs, SDRs, and have the IMF as this institution that basically is the the eye of Sorum, you know, the, the the which which controls all the central bank digital currencies. So whether or not they're going to be allowed to do that, or whether or not the other powers that be, such as Russia or China, are able to have more say, and then we even see something like gold. Rep if gold was repriced and, and priced accordingly, it would be trading significantly higher. And there's also short. While we're looking at this this nice setup on gold, it would stand to reason that we see more central banks take positions of gold under this current environment that we're in. So I, it's okay to be bullish on gold and bullish on Bitcoin. I think so. I know some Bitcoiners who, who don't like that. That's, I, I think it's great. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a big gold guy. I, I have no problem. But, you know, gold over the last 10 years still has ultimately done nothing compared to what Bitcoin has done. And I believe that the massive appreciation is to be had in Bitcoin. So I hope that's clearer. What is a better spot, Bitcoin or stocks in Marathon Digital? Uh, I wish I had it on me. I had this beautiful presentation that Bitcoin Magazine did on the, on the public Bitcoin miners. 
Uh, I might be able to dig it up. I might not. I'm not positive. Uh, but um, so at the end of the day, there's something to be said for owning stock, which you don't really even own that stock or stock stock certificate or owning, uh, you know, Bitcoin offline in a hardware wallet, spot Bitcoin in a hardware wallet. Right. So I, I think that's where it's at at the end of the day. So if you are, you know, you, look, this I'm not the person to give this type of advice, but if you are holding money in some type of retirement account, do you want that in GBTC where you don't have to worry about, you know, holding the keys and you feel it's safe on your, you know, whatever broker you use? Or would you want a self-directed RA where you actually store that Bitcoin and secure it yourself? using multi-sig, you know, whether it's two out of three or, or three out of five keys in different geographic locations. And in case there's any type of destruction of the financial system that you know that you have your Bitcoin, where in the other way, you're not going to have your GBTC. So those are things to think about, right? Uh, what's my take on, so I'm entirely bullish on El Salvador. I'm entirely bullish on, did you see El Presidente was putting out messages on Twitter that to help people protect themselves versus the COVID virus, that they should really start making sure they're taking care of their immune system, eating well, exercising, getting sunlight. I sincerely wish that was the messaging that we had from our overlords from the very beginning. I was always very consistent about that going back to the beginning of the pandemic and the lockdowns. Why are they not telling us to take vitamin D, vitamin C, vitamin B12? Why are they not t telling us to get sun? Why are they lock, you know, so I'm bullish on El Salvador. I'm bullish on people looking to help further their country. I don't think it'll be the last Bitcoin bond. I am sure, I feel confident that the bonds will be well, well oversubscribed. And I do believe that afterwards, there will be another bond to follow. That's my that's my opinions on El Salvador and the bond coming up. It's going, oh, how, how does that play with the Fed hike? Um, I, I think that they're getting a much better um, deal from the market than they would be getting from the IMF. I don't think that effect. I don't think that the Fed's rate hikes. So just let me be very, very simple and very clear. The the Fed rate hikes, in my opinion, are extremely bullish for the markets. They, like, the, the if the Fed is hiking now, the one thing different is potentially that the Fed is tightening. This is true that the Fed is tightening into a weakening economy because of inflation getting out of control. Right. That that is the one big risk here that the Fed is tightening into a weakened economy because inflation is getting out of control. And guess what? If they if they make that mistake, the response is going to be a quick reversal of a policy mistake and a massive injection, which is going to cause more inflation. That is that's why hyperinflation and loss of trust could happen very quickly, right? So I guess you could look at it in, these, in this way, right? Historically, the Fed hiking is very bullish for the markets. If this time it causes any type of disturbance, that the, it's going to have to be a very quick reversal and a pivot in the other way. And then that's when you're really going to want to own Bitcoin, gold, precious metals, because if you're looking at a loss of faith in the currency, what else do you want to hold, right? Yep, this is this is all very true. You know, uh, this is where Raul Paul offers some really good insight into the space. And right now, though, at the beginning of the year is not when institutions are, are rebalancing. 
is it possible the drawdown we saw in September, in December, had to do with rebalancing? Yes, it is. There, there could have been a lot of profits being taken off the table in order for, for institutions to get paid. And then, you know, at the beginning of the year, though, it's fresh slate. So that that rebalancing is not happening. Could that happen at the end of the first quarter and every other quarter? Yes, it can. But that's something that maybe is not talked about enough and should be. Because if they see their pro- if they take a Bitcoin position and Bitcoin moves up over the course of a quarter or two, you know, 100, 200 percent, they're going to be selling to rebalance that portfolio. And that might be why we see the changing structure of the Bitcoin market going forward. We do have new players for sure. And it's why we've been watching it. All truth there. What is it? Every Solomon, every time they do that, people drop their stocks and coins faster than I can eat a pizza. Government answers for canceling events that it could have been as strong right now. Um that I mean this is the way in my this is this is the one thing that I wish that every person that I know of were, were doing the same. I believe understanding your risks and there are risks that we all know that for real. They're all very real. But they're calculated risks, right? That if you're sincerely looking to to change your position of life, don't don't People are always looking to do things too quickly rather than doing things correctly. Um, that, I mean, yes. 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 I remember the last, I'm going to call it on West. I'm not, I'm going to call it the last policy mistake. But whether, yeah, I agree with you on 100%, Wes. These guys are calculated, diabolical monsters, right? Uh, but, and, and we were talking about earlier on the discord, like people don't understand they have different incentives. People think they're mistakes because they're not helping them. They're hurting them. Yeah. That their incentive is to help the, the powers that be their private shareholders to take money from one group of people, which happens to be me and you and to distribute it back towards the, whatever those powers that be are. Right. The Fed talks about it wants to fight inequality. It's the greatest cause of inequality there is in the world. Anyway, here's a big policy mistake. Right here, rate hike, December 2018. It happened to be the bottom of the Bitcoin bull market, right? It's not a coincidence. It also happened to be what set gold on fire, right? Hold on. Rate hike, December. Why? I, listen, I remember at the time very clearly the legend, Paul Tudor Jones, as the Fed hiked, he said, they just made a policy mistake. That will be their last rate hike this cycle. And from here on in, they're going to have to lower rates. And he was right. So in this case, was Bitcoin reacting to the rate hike positively or was it reacting because of the countdown to the end began. I, I, I don't have the answer to that, right? Gold, we see that, you know, it's every beginning of rate, every rate high cycle, gold starts moving up. Um, I don't have the answer to that. And I know that it's not a mistake. I know it's on purpose, but that, that, I mean, it's a mistake. It's a mistake in that it was the wrong decision, but it's not a mistake, Wes, in that they knew exactly what they were doing and why they were doing it. <laughs> this is the, the the meme of the day, right? The meme of the day. Um. All right. So tomorrow, that was a great idea. Tomorrow, we're going to go and dig deep into, uh, you know, right now, alts and Ethereum, right? And uh, that's what we're going to do. We're going to make sure we have a good presentation on that. So for now, everyone, I wish you a beautiful day. Thanks for spending this time for me. So and before I do, I'm going to play a song that might be appropriate for some. And then, when it, you know, if there's any questions or anything that we want to talk about, you know, bring it on and let me know. Thanks, brother.
another nice night. Jose, thank you guys for Why is everybody in the world seem so divided? Why is everybody gotta hate each other who decided? If I took all the world's pride and all the world's money and wrapped it in a blanket and put it in a buggy, could you see that maybe that baby was just the same as you are? You know, it's never been easy. Every day for everybody ain't breezy. And I hope you realize when you look into another person's eyes, you know today would be a very good day just to have a good day. You know today would be a very good day just to have a good day. With a little more love and a little more laughter, a little more good vibes, less disaster. You know today would be a very good day just to have a good day all day long. All day long Good days, please come more often Everybody's in the streets out coughing Smog in the air, gonna send you to your coffin Plastic everywhere down there with the dolphins Everybody was born Thank to a mama everybody. So everybody is connected watching. like karma So disconnect really yourself really from the drama time. Everybody's trying to heal like trauma you know it's never been easy Every day for everybody ain't breezy And I hope you realize When you look into another person's eyes You know today would be a very good day Just to have a good day You know today would be a very good day Just to have a good day With a little more love And a little more laughter A little more Thanks, good bro, vibes, less disaster You know today Great would be a very good day Just to have a good day And I say hey, hey, Put all my troubles to the side and I say, hey, 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 thank God, God, we realize and I say, hey, hey, put all my troubles to the side and I say, hey, 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 thank God, God, we realize and I say, hey, 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 thank God, God, we realize and I say, hey, 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 thank God, God, we realize and I say, hey, 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 thank God, God, we realize and I say, with a little more love and a little more laughter, a little more Thanks, good Jeff. vibes, less disaster. You know today would be a very good day just to have a yeah. good day <laughs> all day. For a good day, you know that. For a good day, yeah, we need one. For a good day, we got this. Last. For a good day. And tomorrow, we're gonna, we'll talk about the alts tomorrow. We're going to put it all together and make sure we keep doing what we do best. Andre, thank you all for the support. That means the world to me. Got some more songs playing over here. <laughs> All right, everyone, have a beautiful day. Thank you. We'll do it again tomorrow. May God bless you. I'll talk to you soon.